The Rat and the Elephant A rat was traveling along the king's highway. He was a very proud rat, considering his small size and the bad reputation all rats have. As Mr. Rat walked along, he kept mostly to the ditch, he noticed a great commotion up the road. And soon a grand procession came in view. It was the king and his retinue. The king rode on a huge elephant adorned with the most gorgeous trappings. With the king, in his luxurious howdah, were the royal dog and cat. A great crowd of people followed the procession. They were so taken up with admiration of the elephant that the rat was not noticed. His pride was hurt. What? Fools! He cried. Look at me! and you will soon forget that clumsy elephant. Is it his great size that makes your eyes pop out, or is it his wrinkled hide? Why? I have eyes and ears, and as many legs as he. I am of just as much importance, and... But just then, the royal cat spied him, and the next instant, the rat knew he was not quite so important as the elephant. A resemblance to the great in some things does not make us great. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys were playing one day at the edge of a pond in which lived a family of frogs. The boys amused themselves by throwing stones into the pond so as to make them skip on top of the water. The stones were flying thick and fast, and the boys were enjoying themselves very much, but the poor frogs in the pond were trembling with fear. At last one of the frogs, the oldest and bravest, put his head out of the water and said, Oh, please, dear children, stop your cruel play. Though it may be fun for you, it means death to us. Always stop to think whether your fun may not be the cause of another's unhappiness. The Crow and the Pitcher in a spell of dry weather, when the birds could find very little to drink, a thirsty crow found a pitcher with a little water in it. But the pitcher was high and had a narrow neck, and no matter how he tried, the crow could not reach the water. The poor thing felt as if he must die of thirst. Then an idea came to him. Picking up some small pebbles, he dropped them into the pitcher one by one. With each pebble, the water rose a little higher until at last it was near enough so he could drink. In a pinch, a good use of our wits may help us out. The Ants and the Grasshopper One bright day in late autumn, a family of ants were bustling about in the warm sunshine, drying out the grain they had stored up during the summer, when a thirsty starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat. What? cried the ants in surprise. Haven't you stored anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I didn't have time to store up any food whined the grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. The ants shrugged their shoulders in disgust. Making music? Were you? They cried. Very well. Now dance. And they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. There's a time for work and a time for play. The Ass Carrying the Image A sacred image 
was being carried to the temple. It was mounted on an ass adorned with garlands and gorgeous trappings, and a grand procession of priests and pages followed it through the streets. As the ass walked along, the people bowed their heads reverently or fell on their knees, and the ass thought the honor was being paid to himself. With his head full of this foolish idea, he became so puffed up with pride and vanity that he halted and started to bray loudly. But in the midst of his song, his driver guessed what the ass had got into his head and began to beat him unmercifully with a stick. Go along with you, you stupid ass, he cried. The honor is not meant for you, but for the image you are carrying. Do not try to take the credit to yourself that is due to others. A Raven and a Swan A raven, which you know is black as coal, was envious of the swan, because her feathers were as white as the purest snow. The foolish bird got the idea that if he lived like the swan, swimming and diving all day long and eating the weeds and plants that grow in the water, his feathers would turn white like the swans. So he left his home in the woods and fields and flew down to live on the lakes and in the marshes. But though he washed and washed all day long, almost drowning himself at it, his feathers remained as black as ever. And as the water weeds he ate did not agree with him, he got thinner and thinner, and at last he died. A change of habits will not alter nature. The Two Goats Two goats, frisking gaily on the rocky steeps of a mountain valley, chanced to meet, one on each side of a deep chasm through which poured a mighty mountain torrent. The trunk of a fallen tree formed the only means of crossing the chasm and on this not even two squirrels could have passed each other in safety. The narrow path would have made the bravest tremble. Not so our goats. Their pride would not permit either to stand aside for the other. One set her foot on the log, the other did likewise. In the middle they met, horn to horn. Neither would give way. And so they both fell to be swept away by the roaring torrent below. It is better to yield than to come to misfortune through stubbornness. The Ass and the Load of Salt A merchant, driving his ass homeward from the seashore with a heavy load of salt, came to a river crossed by a shallow fjord. They crossed this river many times before without accident, but this time the ass slipped and fell when halfway over. And when the merchant at last got him to his feet, much of the salt had melted away. Delighted to find how much lighter his burden had become, the ass finished the journey very gaily. Next day the merchant went for another load of salt. On the way home, the ass, remembering what had happened at the fjord, purposely let himself fall into the water, and again got rid of most of his burden. The angry merchant immediately turned about and drove the ass back to the seashore, where he loaded him with two great baskets of sponges. At the fjord, the ass again tumbled over, but when he had scrambled to his feet, it was a very disconsolate ass that dragged himself homeward under a load ten times heavier than before. The same measures will not suit all circumstances. The Lion and the Gnat Away with you, vile insect! said a lion angrily to a gnat that was buzzing around his head, but the gnat was not in the least disturbed. 
do you think? He said spitefully to the lion. That I'm afraid of you, because they call you king? The next instant, he flew at the lion and stung him sharply on the nose. Mad with rage, the lion struck fiercely at the gnat, but only succeeded in tearing himself with his claws. Again and again the gnat stung the lion, who now was roaring terribly. At last, worn out with rage and covered with wounds that his own teeth and claws had made, the lion gave up the fight. The gnat buzzed away to tell the whole world about his victory. But instead, he flew straight into a spider's web, and there, he who had defeated the king of beasts came to a miserable end, the prey of a little spider. The least of our enemies is often the most to be feared. Pride over a success should not throw us off our guard. The Leap at Rhodes a certain man who visited foreign lands could talk of little when he returned to his home except the wonderful adventures he had met with and the great deeds he had done abroad. One of the feats he told about was a leap he had made in a city called Rhodes. The leap was so great, he said, that no other man could leap anywhere near the distance. A great many persons in Rhodes had seen him do it, and would prove that what he told was true. No need of witnesses, said one of the hearers. Suppose this city is Rhodes. Now show us how far you can jump. Deeds count, not boasting words. The Cock and the Jewel A cock was busily scratching and scraping about to find something to eat for himself and his family when he happened to turn up a precious jewel that had been lost by its owner. Aha! said the cock. No doubt you are very costly, and he who lost you would give a great deal to find you. But as for me, I would choose a single grain of barley corn before all the jewels in the world. Precious things are without value to those who cannot prize them. The Monkey and the Camel At a great celebration in honor of King Lion, the monkey was asked to dance for the company. His dancing was very clever indeed, and the animals were all highly pleased with his grace and lightness. The praise that was showered on the monkey made the camel envious. He was very sure that he could dance quite as well as the monkey, if not better. So he pushed his way into the crowd that was gathered around the monkey, and rising on his hind legs began to dance. But the big hulking camel made himself very ridiculous as he kicked out his knotty legs and twisted his long clumsy neck. Besides, the animals found it hard to keep their toes from under his heavy hoofs. At last, when one of his huge feet came within an inch of King Lion's nose, the animals were so disgusted that they set upon the camel in a rage and drove him out into the desert. Shortly afterward, refreshments, consisting mostly of camel's hump and ribs, were served to the company. Do not try to ape your betters. Mm -hmm.